Hello. Good morning. Or good afternoon. How are you doing? <coughs> so, uh, sorry, I'm a bit sick. I'm running a cold. Hopefully, I will uh, be able to talk until the end. So, hi, I'm Christian. I'm now going to talk to you and explain to you my personal private views, how to start as a security engineer. So, the talk started actually last year at DEF CONF India. That's the traditional opening. They got danced off with the fireworks last year. I've given a keynote about security and community and responsibilities, and people ask me actually how to start as a security engineer. So, agenda and goals, what you're going to learn here, and to start with disclaimer, this is a very opinionated, opinionated and subjective talk. It's just my personal ideas, which maybe you find them useful or not. It's also incomplete, probably biased, because I'm more of a back-end engineer, and it's not that serious, it's a bit of edutainment too, so I hope to entertain you a bit. Uh, so chapter one is going to be thinking and chapter two is going to be learning. So how to think as a security engineer and how to, what I think is useful to learn. And one thing is to learn is that security engineering are not always the people that are liked by most because it's one feedback I got. Uh, DEF CONF India, uh, well, either we break stuff or we break stuff. <laughs> yeah, whatever. So, and a quick uh, recap from my presentation I gave last year at DEF CONF, why should we care about security? Uh, just very, very quick. So, it's for one about money. Uh, you can lose lots of money if you don't care about security. Or you can actually kill people if you have like that one. And replacing a pacemaker is not an easy thing. You have to cut people open to fix a security bug and nobody wants to get cut open. So let's start with some statements and propositions just to get you feedback from the audience. Do you think about that? So security is actually a feature or something you can sell your customers to. And um, as an attacker, you only need just one vulnerability, but as a defender, somebody like us writing software, we must be always perfect, always. And finally, most users just don't care that much about security, and just often they just install like malware on their own computer, to use stupid passwords, and it's mostly users to blame. So, what do you think? Feedback, so who think that's a valid proposition, valid statement, or who think that's Hands up, you think it's good? Okay, just a few hands. Well, okay. I think I spoiled it a bit. But I think. Because I think that's actually. <laughs> I used to think like that. Blame the users, we are the engineers, we are perfect, and users are. No. Could you please close the door? Thank you. I uh, think uh, it's very dangerous, partly also arrogant to think like that, and I'll explain to you later why. Because we engineers, we software developers, actually do stuff for users. So if you know the old movie Tron, we fight for the users. We don't fight like for ourselves. We want to build something to sell to people, to uh, be useful, especially as open source engineers. So chapter zero is actually attitude. So how you should actually think about security. And the first thing is security is not a feature, not like by itself, because would you buy a car that's like advertised like that? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you would just assume that a, a car just doesn't explode by itself and nobody would actually advertise uh, cars to, yeah. So, and um, civil engineers, automobile engineers, are, they all learned that the hard way, there were multiple accidents in the past, let's say, uh, bridge accident in Scotland, uh, 150 years, 200 years ago. Oh, let me see my speaker slides, uh, speaker notes, oh, again. Um, so, they learned the hard way that you should not build bridges in a way that they just collapse. And um, the aeronautics, uh, industry also does lots of testing. So that picture I had last year, how they actually engineer and test uh, airplanes. So that's a wing up test. You see that's the tip of the wings. So they do very thorough testing because if you have an airplane, there is no safe mode as soon as it's in the air. So you have to get the thing down in one piece somehow and if that fails, well. Yeah, it comes down, but you want to have one piece. And uh, yeah, it's also, security is also not digital 
And I was looking for a word that explained black or white without using word black and white. It's the only word I could find. So it means it's not just either totally secure or totally insecure. There are multiple shades between that. And Alex Gaynor wrote a very good blog post about that, the worst reason information security, that you must be perfect always. In most cases, it's not that. It can have like slightly insecure software which you do it the right way. And how do they relate to exploding cars? Hmm, yeah, so maybe you, you need uh, sometimes a car that does not explode if you shoot at that. Maybe in other cases you want to have like a cheap car that runs on standard like roads. And that's something you have to figure out uh, who is your advert, uh, adversary, who's your enemy, who tries to attack you and uh, how much can you actually lapse. And also, there's no thing as unbreakable encryption or absolute security. If somebody asks me, hey, I want something unbreakable, how about like a Kardashev level three alien civilization that can harness the energy of the whole universe to power a supercomputer? Can they break your encryption? Well, if you can prove that even the alien civilization could not do that, maybe then you're unbreakable, but maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to think about uh, threat modeling, you have to weight cost and benefits, and you have to actually document what could go wrong. Uh, one point that people are always, I think a good example of that is a fingerprint sensor on your mobile phone. Uh, for most people it's actually beneficial to use a fingerprint sensor because uh, it's very easy to lock and unlock your phone, except if you have like state sponsors attackers that want to steal like your data, if you're like a journalist, then it's maybe not the best way, but for most people, although it can be broken more or less easily, yeah. Or uh, cost benefits, uh, sometimes it's fun to think about like quantum computer TLS ciphers, um, but in most cases it's actually don't use vegetable names, uh, yeah. <laughs> Go for the low hanging fruits. <laughs> so um, people in the past had that, so you want to have like defense in depth. Um, or like aircrafts do that also, they have like multiple, so it's a, uh, it's a wing from the airplane, just they have multiple ways to actually control the thing that's uh, I'm not going to into because already just like one and a half minutes in the beginning to explain that, but even if both engines, the, so the power generator and the batteries failed, and that control all these flaps and spoilers and whatever they have on the wings, there's oh, still one more backup mechanism for airplanes, and that's, I figured that out, I felt a bit more safe to fly. They can do something like that, they can just, that's a rat, that's a ram turbine, so even if everything fails, they can still power the whole engine, uh, the, the whole um, hydraulics and control the plane. So, if you develop software like that, even if everything goes wrong, you have like a backup, it's probably good. And that makes the oil industry a very safe place. Uh, I still have the slide from 2017 because 2018 wasn't that, not that good. And also in 2017, we had like that one where Amazon brought, one engineer brought <laughs> a large part of the internet down. Um, we didn't have any bad large outtakes this year as far as I know, uh, last year as far as I know. And so last one, uh, please mind the user. And uh, if you're from London, you may know that one. So please um, take care of the users because if you still think that users are to blame for security incidents, it's the wrong way. Just take care and think and there are lots of ways humans can do stupid things. Let's uh, again repeat from last year. Uh, social engineering is a big issue. Uh, well, like you have uh, attacks that try to do like, it's called spear phishing. We get information of a CEO and trick other people to send you money. Uh, other people like to give away chocolate and get passwords, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so you have to ask yourself, not what users can do for security, what, what security engineers can do for users to make users more safe. And especially people like that, your grandmother. So what's your first reaction? You see that? Anybody? Yeah. Okay, yeah, epic fail. You shouldn't 
probably scream at your grandmother, but just ask yourself, why did your grandmother install Flash? Maybe she wanted to watch an old um, video recording she made like years ago with a old phone. The only way to actually view the video recording as you as a baby is installing Flash. So ask why. And uh, related to that, user interfaces, uh, there have been two accidents, incidents the last two and a half years. Left side is Hawaii, where somebody um, made a mistake and didn't understand the user interface. The other one, a couple of months ago, very unfortunate, where there was an incident where an airplane crashed because the user interface did not tell the pilot something the pilot could understand in an immersion situation and basically the airplane tries to save itself by driving itself down in the sea and people just died. The whole, uh, the whole crew, everybody on board by user interface problem. And the L industry has another way to model that kind of security. I like L a lot because they are usually safe. It's called the Swiss cheese model, where you have multiple layers that protect each other and only when all these holes, the small gaps in your design come together, so human error, technical error, design errors, oh, sorry, uh, then it fails. So, yeah, so, no, next one. How should you think as a security engineer? Oh, I'm almost in time. Um, one <coughs> sentence that I picked up many years ago from a book by Bruce Schneier is to be professional paranoid and paranoid in quotes because paranoia is actually a serious mental illness, not something you should make fun of. Uh, but I think most people think of security engineers that they emphasize too much on security, less on usability and sometimes blow out security bugs out of proportion. And just to um, remember, keep professional, keep your own bits of paranoia, and um, you have to find a balance. And another thing I personally do a lot is just to, for one, be creative. Think of like, like funny, crazy ideas. But the other thing is often security bugs repeat themselves. There have been like Leichenbacher attacks for the last 20 years, uh, attack on RSA. Not sure if you covered that because I missed your talk. Um, uh, often if you see like a security bug coming in for language, so I'm on the Python security team and there have been places and cases where we have bugs in Ruby and PHP and we had the same in Python because we made the same mistakes. Um, software is often or even hardware like in these layers and um, these abstraction layers are leaky, especially if you consider security and they might even less look like this stone, but more like Jenga Tower <laughs> almost falling over and uh, they leak through. Um, very good example for that I like is the way you can actually exploit uh, behavior of electrons in your computer from JavaScript in your browser and do a row hammer attack. And that goes through so many layers of interaction, abstraction, it's just mind boggling. Um, RSA attacks, you can even track them with a microphone. They have been funny attacks using acoustics. I have that slide for a couple of years now. Still love that, it's funny. A new one I found just going the other way. If you look into security, you want to make your, like, your data center secure. It's against like intruders. And that's not a typo. <laughs> uh, two days ago on Twitter, uh, just too funny to not add that. So um, it doesn't help if you make your software, your, your server secure, you also want to make access to your infrastructure secure. So, and there's so many levels. And animals are fun. Uh, that's also something I regularly bring up. Um, uh, terrorism, actually most dangerous ones that are squirrels. And this is a list, a website that lists uh, power outages of data uh, centers and big cities by animals, with maps and uh, links to news reports. And, um, <laughs> Oh, okay. And uh, finally, another slide I'd like to bring off this. It's also, if you're a security engineer or engineer in general about ethics and compliance and just be nice and don't be an idiot. Uh, so um, we have a responsibility to keep people safe. <laughs> 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 The original, 
posting what this company who solved that as a, a t-shirt, but the last sentence was, uh, Sudi, I love you, and the girl replied, we, yeah, I love you too. Uh, I think that's the better version of that. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Yeah. So, um, what should you learn? Um, the hardest thing to actually admit to yourself is that you actually don't know nothing. So, there's the so-called Socratic paradox. I know that I know nothing. Um, you must be aware that computer science, uh, security, programming, it's so complex, it's virtually impossible to even understand one area very well. You can have like be especially in a very narrow area or know like a bigger area a bit better, but actually knowing all of it is impossible. So be aware of that. So that's why you need communication. I think that's the most important skill, uh, both in the sense of talking to your team members, talking to users, understanding users, but also to gather information. And finally, uh, it's by Google's uh, security princess, Parisa Tabritz. Uh, Stop reading, start doing. So you can read a lot of security, but you actually must get your hands dirty and get practical. But if you want to start by reading, and I actually recommend that, I really like that book. It was one of my first security books, and you can get that now for free. It's a bit dated, but still very good. It explains like different kind of security modeled by, I think, household, military base, and hospital. Uh, like a practical uh, ideas uh, and practical case studies. Okay, let's get down to a bit more concrete things, um, running through that. So uh, I also will upload the slides so you don't need to write down all the links and names that will pop up the next couple of minutes. I'm just throwing the slides in your face and uh, hopefully uh, I'll have the slides up in an hour or so. So one of the important things is you need soft skills like as a hero engineer, but general as an engineer, you want to work in a team. You want to work in a team that's diverse, both in a social uh, consideration, but also technical expertise. You need people who know like how hardware works. You need people who know how see crypto works. Other, you know how like browsers work. Because I don't know like front end development. I almost no clue about that. But we have like, people on our team that now front end things. And if I talk to them and change, exchange ideas, they may come an idea and yeah. Uh, it's also very important to know how to find information. It's less about like knowing all the things. These days we can just use DuckDuckGo, Google or whatever to find information. But understanding concepts and then be able to find information about that concept and evaluate which information is actually good, which is maybe bad information. Yeah. Uh, other things to have your legal affairs, if you deal with security, there's often compliance rules. If you find security bugs, you may actually get in trouble reporting them, depending which country you are or which company you found a security bug. Uh, rhetorics is good. How to convince people that they may have a problem and yeah. And reading and writing documentation, I think lots of engineers consider like doc writers as like second class, whatever people, but think writing clear documentation that's easily understandable by the target audience, either for other engineers or for end users or for managers, for decision makers, politicians, that's uh, not that easy. And uh, we need them. So, uh, last chapter, like in social human interaction, uh, is one book or two books and one website related to a book that I like regarding social engineering. That's the secret agent stuff. Um, so how to trick people and give you information or access. So that's one of the books I read. Oh, by the way, the books I'm showing here are books that I own and have more or less read and I like them. There are tons of other good books. These are ones I actually enjoyed. Uh, OPSEC and security, stuff you should know. First of all, self-defense. So it's, it helps to eat your own dog food, understand how to protect yourself, to then explain users how to, they can protect themselves, and also to learn how to make it easier for users to protect themselves. And freedom of the press has a very good training material for journalists, even in countries that are less friendly. Yeah, and um, admin things, 
if you work in Unix environment, uh, there's one good book I have as the second edition of the third one is even more up to date or man pages. So if you do like back end development, you want to know how your operating system actually works and it's designed, that one helps. Other than that, uh, any engineers does something with internet should actually know how like IP44, IP46 works, how like firewalls work, DNS is very important. Um, uh, Red Hatters should know uh, SL Linux a bit, and there are tons of very good tools I sometimes use. And uh, are recommended like Wireshark, analyzing network traffic, Nmap, Metasploit, or Dissembler if you're going a bit deeper. Software, um, there are four big projects. Uh, the Open Web Application Security Project, CB CWE and CVE, and the ITF Request for Comments. These are standard documentations and good listing of security bugs. And um, I recommend to, if you work in any kind of development, to keep track of that, especially the, for web developers, the OA, OWASP is a uh, very helpful listing like common vulnerabilities. And you should be familiar with these kinds of attacks as a front end and web developer and uh, um, back end developer where really find funny, still these days XML attacks are dominant. They're still in the top 10 of bugs applications. But also Unicode, there are fun things. There are like characters that look at other characters or if you have white characters and do um, quoting normalization in the wrong order, you can actually have like a persistent XSS. Just learned that the other day. Uh, programming languages, uh, to understand security, you probably need like very low level things. To write these days new program, new software, probably use the, the right side because they're memory safe. Um, cryptography, three books. Uh, the left one uh, was my first crypto book I actually bought almost as a kid. Uh, that's more like a popular science, easy reading book from Simon Singh explaining crypto from like ancient Egyptian to post quantum computer things. Uh, more like a history book, very fascinating. The book in the middle is a bit dated, but still good. But I would not use the book to design a new protocol, but to understand like thinking. And the right one is a rather modern uh, crypto book by J.P. Amazon. Uh, also, if you know a bit math and a bit crypto, it's good to read. Other resources, um, there's the Crypto uh, Crypto V1 Dan Boone course. You can still sign up. They just opened up the signing process three days ago, four days ago. I like that uh, Crypto Pulse Challenge, and the last book is also for free, but that's actually super complex. If you want to know the math behind like letters, I don't understand that, but well. Um, for TLS SSL certificates, that's the standard book these days. For a long time, we didn't have a standard book. The CAB forum link, that's the standard used by all modern browsers and CAs that are public. For pattern authentications, if you still think you should have one upper, one lower, one number, read that guide that's from NIST and you will no longer think it's a good idea. Uh, 2FA, Fido, or a web often what's coming up now, OpenID Connect for mm, protocols that use like um, social network logins are good and Tori Hans have been pwned. That's a, it's a very useful uh, site that lists like you can even check your account if you got exploited by an attacker. Some MISC stuff, so just some blog posts. Linux Weekly News had security news about Linux. Troy Hunt again, Krebs on security. Bruce Schneier. And there's a, also a monthly newsletter by Hanno Berg uh, about TLS things. If you'd like to watch videos, I recommend videos from these four conferences. There are from politics to easy to uh, mind-boggling complex things. Uh, for Case Computer Club, they usually have names like 35C3, so that makes it a bit easier to find them on YouTube. And here's a bunch of names from people I follow on Twitter or read the, the blog posts. They work for different companies um, and just fun following them. I'm out of time. And summary, uh, keep learning, get experience, and if you have more like links, names, or suggestions, please contact me. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, and <laughs> get your hands dirty and don't use your own crypto in production. <laughs> <laughs> I'd bet that's for you, Simo. <laughs>